Anybody there? Right, I've pinned a link to our um, website. If anyone's interested in seeing the products that I'm using today. Say hello if you're popping on. Hi Bev. How are you? How is everyone? <clears throat> Always well, seems a bit wonky this does and bugs me when it's all wonky. <laughs> Afternoon everyone. Say hi, if you fancy. So I know who's there. <clears throat> You're taking a bit of time out, Bev, are you, from, from your busy day? Put that knitting down. <laughs> Afternoon, Tina, how are you? Oh, hello, Judith. I'm very well. How are you? I'm on my lonesome today. Hello, Louise. <clears throat> yeah, all on my own today. Ian's had to take his sister um, somewhere. She's going to be moving house soon, so um, she's had to go and pick up the keys. So I'm on my own. I'm sure I'll be fine, no. <laughs> oh, Bev, there we are. Bev can multitask. Good afternoon, mother, dearest. How are you? <clears throat> this card was inspired a little bit by my mum, actually. She's done um, a similar card to this. Using the same dies, anyway. And you know me and my simple cards. I like to do simple cards. Well, straightforward cards. It's not, it's not the most complicated, not the most fancy, not the most pretty of cards. But sometimes it's nice to just do a, a quick and easy card, isn't it? Just if you've got someone you need to send a nice card to for a birthday or Smothering Monday is coming up, isn't it? That's, that's um, 14th of March. Hello, Michelle. How are you? <clears throat> yeah, Mother's Day. How very rude. It's on my birthday this year. Looks very artistic, Judith says. Why, thank you, Judith. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> I'm one of the most le the least artistic people in in the world, probably. But there we are. So, what time is it? Uh, oh, it's nearly two o'clock. I'll wait just a little bit longer because I like to come on a little, a few minutes early, just so that we can, we'll get settled down and and ready. So, um, if you're watching, it'd be lovely if you could share this live for me. So just click the share button and then share it on your own timeline. Share it in any crafting groups. Afternoon, Annie. Um, any or invite any friends that you know are into crafting that might be interested in watching this. It all helps more people that know about us, the better. Helps to support us without having to pe spend a penny. So the, I might as well start, make a bit of a start here. I'm going to try and do this card more or less completely from scratch as well, because it's quite a 
straightforward card. Um, so I'm going to try and just work my way through it um, and, um, and show you exactly what I've done. So the, um, the dies that I've used to make this card, because um, obviously to cut out these apertures and things like that, I've used these dies. So these are the um, from the new Slimline collection, which I absolutely love, um, by Sue Wilson, Creative Expressions. So the ones I've used, I've used the Slimline Collection Essential Frames. Really nice set of dies. Um, so basically, if you're into your DL cards, this is perfect. Yay! Hi, Janine. Glad you got a notification. <laughs> you're live. <clears throat> yeah, so I've, I've used these. Love these. I, I, I'm really into my DL cards at the moment. So, um, yeah, so, so these are perfect for me. Uh, I think we're out of stock of them in the shop at the moment, but if anyone does want them, um, we will be having them back in again. So if anyone does want them, um, just let us know and we'll make sure that we put a set aside for you. But they will be coming back in soon. Um, and I'm also going to be using this one, which I've been keep, I've been eyeing up for a while and I quite fancied. But I left it on the shelf for a few weeks and I thought, no, I need it to make this card. So So I bought it. So this one is also from the Slimline Collection. This is the Stitched Rectangle Aperture Trio. There is another one which has got little squares instead of the stitch lines, which is quite nice. Um, but I've just gone with the stitched one. And this one, it's got the stitch lines. It's got the, the, um, the cutting parts, so it'll cut out the middles, but it doesn't have an outer cutting edge, which means that you can, if you wanted to do three across a sheet of card, you could do three across. If you wanted to do a big border, a big thick border around it, you can do that. It doesn't sort of doesn't limit you, but it's designed to work with this die, so it does fit in. If I show you, <clears throat> it does fit in inside. And the other thing as well that they're doing is they're doing inspiration. So um, if you open up the packaging, there is some inspiration inside. If you um, if you get stuck, as we all do every so often. So as you can see, this one. Um, it does fit perfectly, so if you wanted to do a bit of a border, you would use this outer one. Um, and if you wanted to do do it slightly smaller, you could do the, the, the inner one as well. And then it would still cut out with the apertures in the middle. So I'm going to be doing something a bit like that anyway today, so I shall show you um, that in a mo. And I'm also going to be using from afternoon Leslie thank you for joining us hi Carolyn um, I'm also going to be using the um, some of the Knitwit collection goodies that we've just had in as well so I've got the lovely backing papers these are 12 by 12 180 GSM so they're a pretty good weight actually just a nice a nice weight they are hello Gaynor and the, the front page shows you all the different patterns you get in there um, so that's a, a nice inspiration and you can use that as well if you die cut out, out the little bits in there as well So just a very quick flick. They are double-sided sheets as well uh, So on the back of them, they've got this sort of faint paw print um, Pattern which I've actually used on my this is what I actually used on my original card if you can see just about there is a faint paw print paw print pattern on there, don't know if you can see that or not, but that's the back backing sheet that I've used there. Uh, good for the other way round on a DL2, like oh right, yes, like that, like that, Annie. Yeah, so landscape way. Yeah, you, it'd be lovely like that, wouldn't it? Perfect. Oh, you've got me thinking now. No, I'm going to carry on that way. <laughs> I'm going to stick to what I was going to do. Yeah, so then it's a really nice. I think you get three of each different um, pattern. And then you obviously get the like a coordinating back background colour on it as well. So you've got a bit of check going on there. What do they call that? They call that um, uh, shark's tooth or something, I think. Is it shark's tooth? Looks a bit like knitting. Bev would like that one, wouldn't you? Uh, and then some nice green ones, and then some nice stripey ones, more check sort of ones, another flowery one. That one's slightly different colour background. 
to that one. Then we've got the paw print one, which is the one I'm going to be using today. And then that one, a bit of blue. And then that's a nice one as well. That's the one I actually used the back of. <clears throat> so um, so that's quite a nice one, sort of a, a check thing. So there are how many? 36 double-sided sheets in there. So you get a decent collection of, of papers in that pack. So I do like that. Hound's tooth. Oh, it's hound's tooth or dog tooth. Oh, I never know. I thought it was shark tooth. Oh, oh well. <laughs> you know what I mean. Um, and also in the Nitwit collection, there's um, a set of um, clear stamps. These are acrylic stamps as well, just so you know. Uh, six by six size sheet. And this is just some sentiments and things like that on that one, um, which I'm probably not going to be using today. And then there's these two, which are the stamp and die sets. So in these, you get <clears throat> obviously the stamps and you get the dies that coordinate. So I'll, you can see on the back there, but if I just take this one out just to show you. So you get a sheet of dies and a sheet of stamps. And this one has got three dies. So you've got the two individual dogs, which are the two that I've actually used on my card. And then you also get the group of three. And then you also get the coordinating die that goes with that as well. So as you can see from that, when you die cut it out, it does come out with a little bit of a border around the edge, but I quite like that. I think it's quite, quite nice. So um, so that's the, the doggy one, which is called Forever Friends. And then you get the sentiment, Forever Friends, woof. And you get some paw prints going up the side there as well, which is quite fun. And then the cat one, the cat one I'm actually going to use today. Because I used the dog one on my last card, so I thought I'll change it up and I'll do the cat one on this card. I'm not a cat fan, but it's nice to have a bit of a change every so often in it. There we are. So with this one, you actually get, oh, you actually get four dies with this one. Um, and and then you get the stamps as well. So you get perfect, cool cat, meow. And then you get three different cats. And then you also get the group of three as well. So that's quite fun, isn't it? I'm going to have to decide which one to use on that today. I shall decide a bit later, though. So... Moving on, so the only thing that I pre-prepared is my card blank. So basically I've just, from an A4 sheet of card, I have uh, measured, so that is 210, that is the full width, full height of the, of the sheet of A4 card. So like that, landscape. So that's the full height, I think, yeah. And then I've cut it to, um, 200 millimetres, 20 centimetres. And then I've just scored it at 100. So there we are. So that makes my DL. And then that works really well with, with these dies then. Everything fits really nicely <clears throat> um, in the middle. So if I take the outer die, that one is just a smidge... The, the very outer edge of this die actually fits completely over the front of this card. So if you wanted to do, well, actually, I think I, that's the one I am going to use. So when I actually come to do my um, my backing, I'm just going to use this die and then it just gives a little bit of an edge and it fits perfectly around there. So that's a good place to start is to start with that size card, because then you know that anything that you put inside is going to fit um, perfectly. So I think that's the first thing I'm going to do. I'm going to die cut my sheet of um, backing paper. So what I'm going to do, because I know that, because that die is 210 by 100, what I'm going to do, I'm actually just going to take my pencil just to make sure that I can get a decent amount um, out of my sheet is I'm just going to put the die on the pen on the on the backing sheet and just mark it 
with my pencil in the corners there. So I've got two marks. <clears throat> I've got one there, and I've got one down the bottom there. And I'm just going to quickly use my guillotine, and I'm going to cut it all the way down there, and I'm going to cut it there. So then that piece is then the right size for when I die cut. So I should do that now. If I leave my card in on the screen so you can see that. And I get my trusty guillotine. <laughs> there we are. So the backing of this is quite nice as well. I could use the backing, uh, but I'm gonna use the fronting. That's a word. So pop that out of the way over there. Oh, hello, Annette. How are you? Thank you for joining us. Um, right. So so what I'm going to do, I'm going to stick this on. Because I've measured, measured it this way, I know that as long as I line it up in the middle of that, I'm going to be fine and it's it's going to cut out nicely. And the reason I'm not just going to leave it as a as a just a plain cut like that is because when you actually use a die, it does tend to um, give a little bit of a beveled edge, and it does tend to emboss slightly into the into the um, the card. It just gives it a nice a nice finish, a little bit more professional. So I'm going to stick that onto there, and then I'm all, I always make sure that I put a little bit of my low tack tape on both sides just in cases because you never know something might move and then I'll end up wasting a piece of paper which I don't want to do. Hello Keris, how are you? This is um, these DL ones, they're Creative Expressions Craft Dies by Sue Wilson. Um, I did say just now that we, we're out of stock at the, mo at the moment. Um, so if you're happy to wait a little bit longer, we will have them back in. If not, you can buy them elsewhere. So I'm just going to pop this quickly through my machine. Hopefully the camera's not going to wobble. No, I think it's right. There we fine. There we are. So... Yes, very well, thank you, Annette. We're all well in Wales. Still alive and kicking. Can't complain. Right, so that's my backing sheet, nicely cut. And if you wanted to, there's a nice little border that you could do something fabulous with if you wanted to. I'm not going to, but you can. There we are, so that's the first part of my card, already done. So that's my nice backing. So that gives me a nice place to start and that fits perfectly on my um, on my DL card blank there. So I'm gonna do all the gluing and sticking together afterwards though. So the next thing I'm going to do, uh, I might as well carry on with the die cutting, get all of that sorted out first of all. Um, so I've got, for my little frames here, so for my um, tri -ap trio aperture frame and for my little outside frame here, I've used um, some of our lovely new um, pearlized cardstock, uh, which we sell in a pack of 10 sheets. Um, oh, and there are sorted colors in there, but they're really nice. Um, so I'm gonna use those. So on this one, I'm actually gonna use this, um, I think this one is called Ice Gold because it's like a sort of a, they're double sided as well. Um, so this is, I think the ice gold, and then I'm gonna use this pale pink one on there. I think it might be called powder pink, but it doesn't matter because you get one of each sheet anyway. So and there we are. So I'm going to use, I think the paler color. Yes, I'm gonna go for the paler color as my apertures. So that'll be behind. And then I'll use the pink as my um, as my frame. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my. So this is just this is a scrap that I already had, 
Um, so it fits my aperture perfectly well. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to stick that onto there. It is going to be a little bit too big, so I'll probably just trim that down afterwards. But I'm just going to pop that onto my plate, put my low tack tape, my well loved reused low tack tape on there. If you've got room, if you've got, um, I'm just using my A5 plates. So if you've got the, the an A4 machine or you you've got the A4 plates, um, if you it always helps with um, anything that's got a straight edge. It always helps if you can put it at a little bit of an angle uh, because then it stops that sort of speed bump effect. Just give me, gives it a nice cut. And if you're using a manual machine, it just makes it a little bit easier to, to wind the handle if it's, if it's a bit of an angle. Does that rhyme? Wind the handle for a bit of an angle. All right, so I've got two, three of the nice little um, rectangles that are popped out there. Lovely jubbly. I might as well just stick that on the side of my table because I'm going to need that again. So as I said, it um, doesn't have an outer cutting edge. So as you can see, it's just cut the um, the apertures and it's put the um, the detail, the stitched edge detail in there which is lovely can you see that i'm sure you can uh, and then it means that you can resize it to whatever size you want if you wanted to have it big you can have it big if you wanted to have it smaller you can have it smaller um, it does actually give a little bit of an edge around there and what you can do is you could use um, a die to to die cut it out i think i'm just going to trim it down with my guillotine so just around this um, edge here I think let me just have a quick look because the next dies I'm going to use I'm going to use that one and the next one in so from the outside the outside is, is the one I use for my backing and then the next two dies are the two dies I'm going to use for my little frame so Let me just check. Yeah, so so when I cut the frame, the inside of the frame is going to come within that little area there. So that shouldn't be a problem at all. So I'm just going to give that a quick trim down on my guillotine. And then I shall cut my other piece of pleasant. amongst yourselves, have a little party. Nearly done, just one more little bit to do. There we are. So that's that cut down. Lovely jubbly, so then that will fit perfectly in there. Uh, and then when I've got my little frame it will cover up if there's any little jaggedy edges or anything like that. It, that my, my nice little frame will cover that up. Um, and then, so this one, this piece of card is going to be for my other frame. So again, I'm just going to take my little pencil and then just make a little mark just there. Just so that I know that I need to just use my guillotine to cut down that much. And then I don't have to worry about wasting any card because obviously you don't want to cut it in the middle of your card there. Um, and I'm just using my A5 plates as well. So just makes it a little bit easier. I mean, you might find a better way of doing it. That's the thing. Everyone finds their um, the easiest way of doing these things, don't they? So... Just because I do something one way doesn't mean it's the right way. There we are. So what I'm going to do now, you can, if you're confident, you can cut both dies at the same time. But I prefer to do one and then do the other. Um, less strain on the machine, less chance that 
the dies are going to move and you're going to end up uh, damaging them and it doesn't take a lot longer just to, just to do it separately. I'm not in any hurry. So I'm just going to pop that through. Like so. There we are. Nicely cut. Uh, yes, yeah, so that's the bit I need. There we are. So that you could use as a a nice little aperture as well for something else, a little border or something. So there we are, so take my sticky off and then the next size down. And then I'm just gonna make sure that I line it up perfectly inside that. Make sure it's in the right place, then give it a bit of a stick down. I think that looks all right. And then I'm just gonna pop that through my machine. Ah, oh, there we are. So good workout as well. What's Elizabeth put? Creative Expressions, there's a link on the website. If you click on the live Ooh. live products link, then click on Thursday the 4th of March. It's third row down. Hope this helps. All right, about the dies. <coughs> yep. It's, I did say it was the Creative Expressions Slimline Collection Essential Frames is the one. But um, yeah, so if you click on the link that I pinned, Every live that we do, we always do a little um, a separate category for that live with all the products that we've used in the live as well. So if you ever need to know what's in that category, what's available, then um, then just click on that. There we are. So that's my other frame done now. So you've got a nice little bit of extra. This is the, the waste bit in effect. So you could use that on something else. So that'd be quite nice. I'm sure you could do something fabulous. And then this little frame here, I do like these little frames, they're really nice, will fit perfectly over the top of my trio aperture. So that's pretty, isn't it? I like that. Ooh, what's my mum asking? What glue would you recommend as I'm still having trouble with glue drying out? Oh dear, I don't know why you're having problems with that. Unless it's, um, you, the only thing with glue is you always got to be careful that you don't put it anywhere that's going to be too warm. So don't put it in a, on a radiator or in a warm cupboard or anything like that. Obviously, because it's glue, it does have water in it, so it will dry out. Um, the glue that we tend to use all the time these days is the original high tack. We love this glue because it's got us, um, it's either silicon or rubber bung or whatever it is at the top. And when you... When you first get it, you'll have to cut um, a little, um, cut the tip off with a pair of scissors, just so that you've got the hole. And you can cut that to wherever you want. So if you want a big, a big hole, you can cut it lower down or higher, higher up for a smaller hole. And because it's one of these squashy rubber bungs, um, as long as you push it back on really firmly onto your glue, it literally never runs, never dries out never dries out never clogs in the in the nozzle anything it's brilliant <clears throat> i love it i love it i love it and i'll actually show you now because um this glue i think the last time we used it was probably when i did my card which was a couple of days ago and sometimes with with glue it can um it can start to to clog your nozzle certainly um after a while so just make sure that the I tend to leave the glue on on its side like that as long as your bung's on the end you're fine um, and then as if it's if it's on its side then it's got less um, distance to travel and I think Ian's cut this really really finely as well really close to the top 
So it should be a very fine, um, fine bead of glue coming out of this. Need to get another one soon, it's getting a little bit low. There we are, and as you can see, I'm just gonna glue right near to the very inside edge of this. But as you can see, I haven't used this glue for a couple of days and it's fine. No problems at all. You can get a nice thin line as well with this. So you don't even really need the um, the fine nozzle glue tips or anything like, like that. And it's a good price as well, £3.50 for a uh, 115 milliliter bottle, which is better value compared to some of them. And it lasts ages and, um, and works really well. So I'm just going to bring this down a little bit. Oops. And just drop it all over my nice clean table. does give you a little bit of wiggle time but it's a very good glue at it does grab very quickly though just make sure that that's roughly in the right place I should really have used my um ooh, my non-stick mat but it's no problem, just give it a little bit, a bit of a spritz with some water, because it's a water-based glue anyway, so there's no, no problems there. there we are. So that's my frame done there. So that's all nicely glued. Fits perfectly like that. So I'll leave that to the side to dry for a little bit. Yes, it is a good idea, isn't it, Mum? Yeah, so we do like this glue. So as long as you make sure that after you've used it, you put your bung on every time, um, then it won't dry out. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to grab my my little my Knitwick collection, perfect, perfect. This one is with the cats. Um, so with this collection, you've got a set of stamps and a coordinating set of dies as well. Um, and I'm going to just use a couple of the cats, Oop, sticky, sticky, and and then I'm going to colour them in and then die cut them out. It's always the best way is to, um, if you're going to die cut anything out, is colour it in first of all, because if you do make any mistakes, um, not that you should be able to because it's relatively easy, but if you do make any mistakes or something just doesn't work for you, um, you can always... You haven't wasted the time to, to die cut it out. At least that's my um, way of thinking anyway. So I'm going to choose a couple of cats. I'm going to go for the two that are sitting up, I think. So I'm going to go for that one and I'm going to go for that one. There's all sorts of different ways you can do it. If you wanted to, you could do the group one and then just put the group of cats at the bottom and then maybe some paw prints or just some sentiments. So these are acrylic stamps, just so you know. So they are a little bit thinner than um, the photopolymer stamps. You can, you can, you can tell the difference. <coughs> you can definitely tell the difference. But they're still perfectly right as long as you look after them. They'll, um, they'll last you well. So then I'm just gonna use my trusty press to impress and then I've got a sheet of um, uh, 200 gram this is our 200 gram super smooth card so I'm just going to pop that in there pop a couple of the magnets in there just in case I need to re-stamp at all and then stamp side down so line side line side down on this and I'm going to stick put those onto my sheet of card and Make sure that you leave a little bit of a space around them because obviously when it comes to die cutting, you need to make sure that 
there's a bit of room and you're not going to end up cutting into a, one of the other ones. So plenty of room around that one. And then there should be plenty of room around that one as well. But I'll just double check. Yeah, plenty of room around that one. So yeah, so we'll be fine. We'll be fine. I have every confidence. So I'm gonna just bring my lid over and pick those up. And then I'm gonna be using, because I've got, because I'm gonna be using alcohol uh, pens, I'm gonna be using uh, the Spectrum Noir alcohol proof dye based ink pad. So you could use, if you're using alcohol pens, this this one works fab um, and it does exactly what it says on the tin. So it's alcohol proof, which means um, the alcohol won't react with the line art. Uh, so that one is a very good one to use. Any dye based ink. So if you've got a memento or anything like that, they're all good to use. Um, you can use Versafine or Versafine Claire. Um, because that is an oil-based ink, um, it's neither water or alcohol-based. So because it's a different um, base to it, it, um, it won't cause any problems. But the one thing I will would advise if you're using any of the Versafines or anything like that is to make sure that you um, either leave it to dry or give it a quick blast with your heat tool just to make sure that it is dry because it does take a bit longer to dry. Um, and if it is a little bit wet and you start using your alcohol pens, sometimes it can smudge a little bit. But this one is designed for alcohol pens. So I'm just going to gently tap onto my stamp. Quite thin lines on this, so I may need to do a couple of impressions but that's the good thing about having a stamping tool is it means that you can stamp repeatedly over the top yeah so it's quite that's quite quite nice but I will give it a little bit extra sometimes um, acrylic stamps don't tend to uh, take the ink quite so well when they're new so sometimes you might need to, to do a couple of impressions But look at that, eh? Perfect. As long as your card doesn't move when you lift the stamp up, then you're okay. There we are. So that's a, it's a bit stronger now. So then I can just give these a quick wipe over while the ink is still wet. If the ink is still wet, then you don't necessarily need to use any cleaning solution or anything like that. But if the ink was a bit drier and it didn't come off, I would use my trusty old archival ink cleaner by Ranger. This is the one that we, we do have this in stock and we love it. And we sell quite a bit of it now because everyone else loves it as well. Because it's really good. It's um, It cleans everything, but it's not too harsh on your stamps. Um, and especially on acrylic stamps, you can use it because acrylic stamps sometimes because they're the sort of the lowest quality stamp. Um, sometimes if you use a, an ink cleaner, it can actually eat into the stamp and, and damage it. Uh, but that our ink, the ink cleaner that we use doesn't. So I should put that to the side now because I will need it to stamp my sentiment a bit later. Um, or do you think I should do it now? Maybe I'll do it now actually. While I've got my stamps out and while I've got my inks out, it would be sensible, wouldn't it? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use one of the little apertures that came out the centre. Um, and I am going to use, not perfect, I think I'm going to use Meow. It's got to be Meow, hasn't it? Because I did Woof on my other card, so I've got to use Meow on this one. So, um, probably would just about fit that way. But I will do it at a little bit of a jaunty angle, I think. Because I do like doing things at a jaunty angle. So I'm just going to angle that. Just about managed to get one of my magnets in there. Should be right. Like 
like so. Pick that up. And then I'll use the same ink pad. Shall I use the same? Yeah, I'll use the same because it's, I might need to stamp it a couple of times, but it should come out all right. And the nice thing about stamping onto um, a pearlized card as, card as well is that um, the pearlescentness comes through as well, which is quite nice. Missed a bit there. Or have I got a dodgy stamp? Yeah, and that's the thing, you can stamp it and stamp it and build up the layers until you're happy with the strength of it. Now I have it has missed a little bit. I think my it has missed a little bit in my E there. So what I will do is I'll just give that a quick wipe just to make sure that my excess ink is off there. Stick it back onto my carrier sheet. And then I'm just gonna grab a a brush, a little brush, so that I can sort out that little hole. Uh, now, where are my brushes? You can never find a nice fine brush when you need one, can you? Because the thing about inks is, obviously, because it's an ink, you can actually use a brush and fill in any little areas. So this is quite handy if you're um, if you're ever stamping anything that's a a silhouette. So anything that's got a solid. Um, Well, a silhouette, basically. You know what a silhouette is, don't you? So anything that's a silhouette, um, that's got more of a solidness to it, um, you can you can just paint. If there's any areas that you miss, you can just paint it with your paintbrush. There we are. And no one would know that it wasn't there. There we are. So that's my meow. Um, so that's that stamped. Oh, thank you, Elizabeth. <clears throat> it is a good idea. I think I actually picked up that. It wasn't my, my idea. I picked it up from uh, Lavinia Stamps, I think it was. I think they did it once because obviously they produce quite a lot of silhouette stamps. Um, and sometimes if they don't stamp perfectly well, rather than trying to re-stamp and re-stamp and re-stamp, um, just, just use your paintbrush just to fill the areas in. So now I'm going to do, just do a little bit of colouring. Very simple images, because they're line quite simple line art images as well. As well, um, I'm just going to do um, I'm just going to do it flat. If you wanted to do a bit of dimension to make it look a bit more realistic, then you can do that. But because they're quite cartoony, I'm just going to go quite simple. So I've chosen a couple of colours. These are the Triblem pens that we do sell in shop, <coughs> and they're on the link as well. Um, so I've got the brown grey blend here. I've also got orange blend because I thought some cats are orange, aren't they? So I thought I'd try an orange and hydrangea blend because obviously you get lilac cats, don't you? But then, I mean, you know, blue cat, the blue dog, you don't get blue dogs, do you? But that's the thing. You can do whatever you want. So the nice thing about the tri blend pens is the fact that you get three pen, three pen shades, three shades of colour in one pen, if that makes sense. Uh, so you get the light, the mid and the dark. And the reason I love these is because sometimes it can be a little bit, um, what's the word? Daunting, that's the word. Um, if you look at all the pens that you've got in a collection and you think, oh, well, I want to do an orange, but which 
colours, which shades will blend with that orange. Whereas with this, you know that when you pick up your orange pen, you've got your light, medium and dark and and they're just going to blend easily with each other anyway. I'm not going to be blending today. I'm just going to be doing solid colours, but um, but it means I've got three different colours. And I did actually have, there we are. I did actually pick up, a, do a little swatch earlier as well. So those are the three oranges that I've got. So you've got the light, the medium and the dark in the oranges. It's quite handy just to scribble on a little scrap of paper, first of all, just to see if it's going to come out the way you want it to. And then you can decide from there. I might, uh, yes, I might do, do the dark bits, do the spots in the dark, I think. Yeah, and I'll use the light or the mid. Oh, I don't know. So that's my problem is I can't make decisions. I'm going to go with the mid. I'm terrible for trying to make decisions. So I'm going to just colour my, uh, my first cat in the mid one. These only have one nib on them. So, um, so they've just got a bullet, I think it's called a bullet nib. But for most colouring, that's fine. I've never had any problems with it. And the other thing that we always recommend as well is to make sure, especially if you've got a nice um, craft table or anything, is to make sure that you've got a scrap of paper underneath whenever you're doing any colouring. And I shall show you why in a moon. So this is when I go all nice and quiet as well because it's all therapeutic in it like I'm getting in the zone so what I tend to do is I tend to go over the whole thing and colour it first of all and then I'll just quickly roughly go over just to put another layer down just to make sure I haven't missed anything and it tends to blend out Any lines? Nice and easy. There we are, it's my orange cat. Everyone likes an orange cat, don't they? There we are. So as I said, um, make sure you've got a scrap of paper underneath just in case, because the, the, the way card, um, this card is designed and a lot of card that is designed for use with alcohol pens is the alcohol is designed to actually soak through the card um, that actually helps with the blending technique um, so so that's a good thing when when it comes out the back so because it comes out the back it could actually go through onto your um, your surface so I always put a little scrap of paper under there um, yes ginger thank you Sarah hello Sarah how are you <clears throat> yeah, so always make sure that you put a scrap underneath. Uh, so then I also want to do, ooh, decisions, decisions. I'm going to do that bit as well. And they've got a nice fine tip on the end of these pens as well. So, so we can get into all the little areas really easily. That looks quite nice, actually. Quite nice, don't you? Anyone got any questions? Anyone been up to anything exciting this week? Anyone been outside the house? Has everyone had their vaccines? Are you still waiting? But because I'm so youthful, I'm obviously going to be later on the list. Ha 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 ha. Oh, I like that actually. That's quite nice. And then what I think I might do is I might do the inside of his ears in the darker colour. And then the outside in the slightly lighter colour. Could even do little stripes if you wanted. Uh, 
a bit dull and gloomy today as well, so I could do with a bit of light, really. But there we are. Oh, marvellous Leslie. Leslie had her first dose yesterday. Did it go well? No problems, I hope. I think uh, most people that seem, do seem to have had it okay. I think there's been a few odd reactions, but that apparently is a good thing. It shows that the, the, um, the vaccine is working. So if we wanted to do shading and, you know, all sorts of things like that, you can do all of that. I'm just do, just laying down a nice flat colour. It's a good way to start if you're not sure about colouring anyway. And I'm never 100% sure on colouring anyway, so. <clears throat> just go over the whole area again, just to make sure it all blends in. Because it's an alcohol pen, they, they do blend really well. Uh, and then I'll go in with my... Well, I did say I was going to use the darkest colour, didn't I, for my... Did I say I was going to use the darkest colour for my spots? I think I did, didn't I? Why not? A three-tone cat. Oh, Louise had her first jab last week. Marvellous. Well, it's good that people are getting them. Oh, Sarah. Oh, painful. How did he manage to do that? Sarah's husband has pulled his shoulder out of its socket. Oh, dear. Nasty. Did he get his bank statement through and it put him into convulsions or something? <laughs> How much have you been spending on craft? Yeah, I'm with you there on, on that, Sarah. I'm not a cat lover. Um, yeah, they are cute images and very easy to colour as well, which is obviously a good thing. I'm going to go for the lightest colour, I think, for his tail as well. So that's the thing about this, these pens, the thing I like about them is the fact that I've got one pen in my hand, but I've actually got three different shades of orange. So I don't have to think about it. I can just... Oh, there's a stranger in the house. Oh, it's Ian. That's all right. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Just thought I'd come in to say I've got to go down the house with Donna to check a few things. All right. Before I take her home. Okie dokie. I've got to come and say hello. Hi, everyone. Hope you're all OK. Yeah, they're all very well behaved today. And you, though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always well behaved. I see you in a bit. Okie doke. There we are. And then I think he needs. What colour are cats' noses? There's a question. Oh, hi, Deborah. How are you? No worries. Better late than never. Lifting rubbish out of the car down the tip. Oh, dear. God, that's weird, isn't it? Strange. Uh, yes, there's a few people that like their, like their cats. Um, I might give him a little brown nose, I think. Just a little bit of brown nose. I'm not sure if they're brown noses or black noses. I don't usually see their faces because they're usually running away from me. Oh, Nick, cute. <laughs> oh, 
I'll let him know that you said hello, Mum. Uh, he's gone now. He's gone, gone down, down to see Donna's new house. Oh, oh, he hasn't even had it. His, oh, his shoulder put back in properly. Oh, oh, that's a bit painful, isn't it? That's what they do say, I think, isn't it? Is when you dislocate anything or take or anything pops out, the best thing to do is to just pop it back in again. I always remember when I was young and I was running down the garden and my sister tripped me up, she did, with her hula hoop. And I fell on the floor and I dislocated my little finger. I can't remember which one, if it was, I think it was that one, the one on the right. And I remember lying on the floor and my finger, my finger was sort of at right angles like that. It sort of went, beep, beep. <laughs> but because I was quite young, I just looked at it and thought, oh, it's not supposed to be there. And then I just popped it back in again. And apparently that's the best thing that you can do. So don't panic, just pop it back in again. So I'm cutting my other cut in now. And this is the hydrangea. I think we need more more hydrangea coloured cats in the world, don't you? It's a bit like a blue rinse actually, isn't it? Like little old ladies have a blue rinse. Maybe you can do that for a cat. <coughs> uh, oh yeah, tortoise shell coloured. You could do that as well, couldn't you? Um, yeah, so I think I'll go for the paler colour on the body as well. My blue rinse cat. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you do remember, Mum. I think I had to go to the hospital, didn't I? to make sure that it was okay, either the hospital or the doctors, I think. And they said it was the best thing was to pop it back in again. Pop my finger back in again. For a random conversation. There we are. Oh, isn't he cute? <laughs> um, and that's the thing with this is you can go to town you can do whatever you want and then I'll do the outside of the ears in the pale colour and then I'll do the inside in the darker colour so shall I go oh he's in a sling oh dear bless him so we can't do anything can he can't stop you from buying craft stuff. Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to go for the darkest colour. I'm going to go for the dark one. So there's a nice, nice contrast between the two colours then. Or two shades. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? I do like my purples. Oh dear, lots of people talking about dislocating their shoulders. Janine says she dislocated her shoulder a few times. Oh, oh, I can't imagine. First time it went back in on its own, but trapped a nerve. Oh, so had to be pulled back out. Oh, 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 oh. we're just well Ian isn't here. He'd be going weak at the knees. My Ian, that is. <coughs> He doesn't like anything. He's very squeamish when it comes to anything like that. Oh, nice. Nice little belly. And I'm just going to colour the tail in the same colour as well. 
So I've just used two colours on this one. Hmm. Well, I think that looks quite nice. Nice colours. <laughs> yeah, so I've just used, so the only ones I've used are the Hydrangea Blend and the Orange Blend. Only two ones that I've used on this. Easy squeezy. Oh, oh. <laughs> <clears throat> that was very brave of you, Sarah. But then you are, um, is it St. John's Ambulance? So they, they do all medical things, don't they? Is it so, no, it's Salvation Army, isn't it, you are? Oh, I get confused. Right, so. <clears throat> so the next thing I'm going to do, so I've coloured those in. And as you can see, all the colour is coming through the back. It hasn't really gone onto my piece of scrap. But just to be safe, because you never know. Chances are, if you're doing it on your nice, nice bit, um, dining room table, <clears throat> yep, that's the time that it'll end up going through. Sod's law, isn't it? Hello, Dawn. How are you? Haven't seen you for ages. Hopefully, when we'll be able to come back, go back in the shop again, we might um, we might be able to pop over. It's a problem. A lot of customers we we haven't been able to see them because they're not allowed to travel at the moment. Right. So I'm going to grab a bit of my tape. And then these dies have been designed to fit the stamps. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to position that over the top. And what you should, when you, when you do it, what you should see is you should be able to see the whole image within the die. So as long as you're, you can see roughly around the, the edge of the image with the die, then you know that you've got it in the right place. And then always make sure that you put a bit of low tack tape down, because if you don't, it will it will move, and then you'll end up with a wonky image. Which is nothing worse, is there, than a wonky image. So I'll do the same with the other one. This one, about, there, I think. Where should I skip that? <laughs> Pop that on there. Ooh, I bet the Welsh rugby team used to get quite a lot of dislocated shoulders, didn't they? Ooh. <laughs> well, try and stay awake, Dawn. Try and stay awake. I say, everyone, keep Dawn awake. <laughs> there we are. So I've just put the dies on there and put my um, uh, my low tech tape on there, just to make sure that nothing moves. And then I'm just going to pop this through my die cutting machine. Like so. Hopefully nothing is moved because my low tack tape is is well loved. It's got all sorts of things on it. It's got glitter and pieces of paper and everything on there. But that's the thing with the low tack tape. You can you can reuse it and reuse it and reuse it until you can't reuse it anymore, <coughs> and that's when you need to get rid of it and start a new piece. There we are. So there's my. My two cats, nicely cut out. The other thing you can do as well is if you do um, um, if you do have a problem with um, lining things up, what you can actually do um, is actually die cut just a pl plain piece of paper like that. Just cut die cut the, the the shapes that you want, and then when it comes to actually um, die cutting them out of the coloured images. <clears throat> what you can actually do, what you probably have to do one at a time really, um, is actually position this over the top of your coloured image. And then all you need to do is just pop the die into that aperture 
and then you know that that is exactly in the right place and then what it will do is it will just die cut through into the um into your image below and then you know it's going to be in exactly the right place so that is another way of doing it and sometimes you do need to do it like that if you can't actually see through the die um but um but with these ones you can see through them so you should be fine like that <clears throat> and because they've got an, a bit of an extra um halo as it were around the edges um that um gives it a bit of leeway as well for for any any misalignment so there we are so i just pop those back onto my sheet so i know where they are <clears throat> and there are my two cats so now i need to stick what do i need to do i need to get my app my card in so this is my dl card i need to stick my backing sheet onto there so i should do that now I, I tend to find if you open the card up, then it'll stay flatter as well. Um, and then you can, as long as you remember which side to put it on. <laughs> Don't put it on the wrong side. Yeah, so it's going to put a bit of glue around the edge. I tend to do a wiggle around the edge on my backing sheets. Because then there's less chance that the glue is going to ooze out. So I'm going to pop that onto there. Make sure that's in the right place before I push it down. Because once it gets pushed down, it's not moving anyway. Yes, Sarah, she likes the ideas of stamps and dies. It is a good, good idea. It just makes it so much easier. Because sometimes you'll, you'll stamp something out and then it's like, oh, how do I get it out of my piece of card um, so that way that solves a problem good stuff there we are so that's on there and then I'm going to put I need to put my little frame on top I'm going to raise it up a little bit with some foam tape uh, and I also need to, before I do that the, the best way to because the last time I did this I did it the other way around and it was a bit more difficult so this time I need to stick my, decide where I'm going to put my cats and then stick them in beforehand because uh, with my dogs, with because I've got big ears, I actually made it so that they were sort of um, popping out of the frame. So they, rather than being in the frame, you can have them so they're in, um, but I, I um, made it so that they were actually popping out, peeking through the front of the frame. So I'm going to do the same sort of thing with this. So basically, you know, I can have the whole cat peeking through like that. That might be quite nice. And then I might have this other one over this side. Yeah, I think that looks quite nice, doesn't it? I think that's quite funky. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my glue. And it's easier to do it this way because last time I did it the other way and I had my phone tape on there already and it was a bit of a faff. It was just a bit more fiddly, so you learn by your mistakes. So I need to put a little bit of glue up the top of his, of his, her head, whichever, on that side. So do that first of all. And then I also need to do a bit of glue at the bottom. So on the front of the bottom of this. So a bit of glue there. And then I know that when I put it through and stick it down, it's peeping through the aperture. There we are. That's quite fun, isn't it? <clears throat> there's a little bit that's hanging off the bottom here. But what I'll do is I'll just give it a couple of seconds to dry and then I'll just snip that off from the back so you'll never see that. So I'll do my other cat at the same time as well. So I thought, you know, if I stick that one on the right hand side, that'd be quite nice, wouldn't it? Just peering out the edge there. So again, I'm just going to put a little bit of glue around by the ears on the front. Or on the back, rather. And top of the head. Maybe a little bit over there. 
and then I'm going to put a little bit down by the tail because on the front and then that'll stick the bottom of, of my cat so position that where I want it doesn't matter if you make a little bit of a mess you put a little bit too much glue on because you're not going to see it I put a little bit low on there but you're not going to see that because it's all going to be stuck down on your card so don't worry about that that one fits perfectly there actually doesn't it it's quite cute just peering peering out and those colors go quite well together i think there we are so that's that stuck on there so i'm just gonna snip my cat's bottom just button there angle my scissors a little bit help if i had smaller scissors but there we are i don't know where they are so i'm just gonna carefully snip that and make sure i don't cut any of the frame there we are so you could never tell could you it's like it's always been there <clears throat> there we are. So now I'm going to pop a bit of foam tape on the back. And actually, before I do that, I'm going to stick down my centerpiece. Because while it's flat, it's probably easier, isn't it? So I'm just going to line that up by eye, just to make sure that it's where I'm going to be positioning it when I put it on with the foam tape after. And then I'm gonna get my meow, and my meow is gonna go in the middle. So just get a little bit of glue. And stick that to around there. And then I'm just gonna pop that in the center. So I know that that's in the right place. <clears throat> and then now I'm going to put the foam, foam tape on, on the back of my frame. So very straightforward card really, isn't it? You know, it doesn't, doesn't, um, doesn't take a lot. And it's a nice, it's a nice enjoyable card. I think it's nice and relaxing nothing too fiddly nice and therapeutic so you can do a bit of coloring a bit of mindfulness you like a bit of mindfulness at the moment so i'm just gonna pop some foam tape on the sides and then the bottom and the top and then a bit in the middle i think as well just for extra support and because i've giving it quite a nice wide border as well. It makes it really easy. I think this is one centimeter wide tape, foam tape. So it makes it really easy to, to stick the foam, your foam tape on. You don't have to worry about cutting down the middle or anything like that, because it's a nice, a nice size. Thank you, Janine. She said, lovely card, classy cartoon. Yeah, that's the thing. It's just a bit of fun, isn't it? You know, and you can do it for anyone. Doesn't have to be for a child, it can be for, a, for an adult. You know, we all need a bit of fun and laughter in our lives, don't we? So there we are. So I'm just going to peel the backing off my uh, tape and the other because the one thing I tend to do as well I'll take the middle bits off the one thing I tend to do what I used to do when I used to use double-sided sticky tape was instead of pulling the whole thing off I always used to just pull it off a little bit or do half and half or not even half and half just start make a start and then bend the backing back I'll show you why in a minute. Uh, 
And the other way of doing it is to put a little bit of glue on your foam tape. And at least then that gives you a bit of extra movement. But this is just another way of doing it. So that's all ready now. So bring my car back in again and then work out where I want it to go. Excuse my head if it's getting into shot. Make sure it's lined up. And then because I haven't taken all of the backing off yet, it means that if I needed to lift it up and remove it and move it, adjust it a little bit, then I could do. But that's fine. So then I'm just gonna peel the edges off, peel my backing tape away. And then I know it's in exactly the position that I want it to be. There we are. Oh, hello, Judith. How are you? Thank you for joining us. No problem. You can always watch later because we um, all of our lives are available either on our Facebook page um, or um, we upload them all to YouTube as well. So we've got a YouTube channel there. So if anyone's watching on YouTube, hello. Um, so we've got a YouTube channel. I think it's, uh, um, uh, I can't remember, Valleycraft. So the Valley, I think it's Valleycraft Limited or Valleycraft UK. I'm not sure which. Uh, but if you can't find it, go to our website, valleycraft.co.uk. And there is a link um, to our YouTube channel on there as well. Uh, there we are. So I'm done. I managed I managed to get through without any problems. So there we are. So quirky colours, a bit of a mixture on there. Um, but um, but no, I think that looks all right, doesn't it? That's not too bad. <clears throat> so that's using the Nitwit, the Nitwit backing papers and the Nitwit uh, stamp and die sets. So it's the first one was using the uh, the doggy one, which was the Forever Friends, and then the second one was using the cats, which was perfect. So that's those, and then obviously I've used the uh, Slimline Collection Essential Frames dies by Sue Wilson. And I've also used the Slimline Collection Stitched Rectangle Aperture Trio. Also by Sue Wilson. Lovely dies, really good. Um, so the um, the essential frames, we will be having them back in stock. So if anyone does want them, let us know and we can make sure that we order enough. Um, and we'll be doing another live next week, next Thursday, same time, two o'clock. Um, don't know what we're doing yet. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Judith. Thank you, Gaynor. Thank you, Tina. Thank you, Annette. Yep, so much easier than scissors, Annette said. Yep, very true. <clears throat> thank you, Janine. Um, so thank you very much, everyone. Thank you for supporting us. Um, don't forget to like and share this post on Facebook or if you're on YouTube, then you can like and subscribe to our channel as well. Um, and you'll get notified about any new videos that we upload. So we'll be doing another live next uh, Thursday at two o'clock. Um, not sure what on yet, but um, we'll think of something. Thank you, Carolyn. Thank you, Mum. Um, and um, if anyone is interested as well in the, uh, we're going to be getting a lot of the uh, Phil Martin Sentimentally Yours products in, the new launches. If anyone's interested in the Compendium um, collection, Compendium box, we'll be doing an order tomorrow. Um, they are available to order on the website now um, and we are doing a bit of a discount on those as well. Um, we'll also be having the Trudy stamps in as well. So we may, we may do a demo, uh, Facebook Live next week on some of Phil's products, actually. That's probably what we will do, because um, we'll be so excited about playing with them all, so we'll have to share it. So, um, thank you very much. Oh, it's just Valleycraft, is it, Judith, for YouTube? I can never remember. Thank you, Bev. Go back to your knitting. Thank you, Dawn. Glad you could stay awake for us. <laughs> Hopefully we'll see you soon. Um, and we're hoping... We've got everything crossed that um, in Wales we'll be able to um, reopen the shop, however limited, 
um, from maybe the 15th of March. If not, it's probably going to be after Easter. Uh, thank you, Deborah. So, um, so hopefully we'll 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 keep everyone posted anyway. So keep an eye on our Facebook, sign up to our mailing list, um, have a look on our website. It'll be everywhere. <laughs> and um, take care, everyone. Be safe, and um, we shall see you all again soon. Thank you. Then bye.